Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Andrew and um, today I was going to do a bit of a walk around of our Jayco Starcraft that we a caravan that we bought about a year ago now and um, we live in full time and I just I'm not going to go through every little thing because there's lots of videos of um, how to how to do specific things but we've sort of come across little uh, fixes and things that we've learnt the hard way so I'll just sort of go around the whole thing and point out a few things. Don't ask me about the bike rack because I don't actually know anything about it yet. We're, um, our son is sort of growing out of a bike he used to have and he has we haven't we haven't yet bought another one so right, this is the, the toilet where the cassette goes. Um, I won't touch it because it's sort of it just it slides in there into the cavity, you just slide it in and make sure that handle is down into the wee notch there and they've got two of them so we fill up one, empty it and put the other one in and empty. So that's the where our cassettes go and that's the, that's the bathroom window just there and this is where our fridge, this is the vents for the fridge and that is our, where we plug our power in when we're on power. We're lucky here because we've got um, We've got a post with the water, with we can fill up our water and we've got um, power on the back of that other side of that, there's power plugs. Um, and that's the fridge there, with the, it's got the a gas, it's a three way fridge, it's got gas um, and mains power and if we wanted to, which we haven't, we could run it off, we could plug it into our, have it going from our um, tow vehicle while we're travelling. Um, this is underneath, I don't know if you can see, oh, it's a bit blurry with the, gla the grass, it's the grey tank on Why the back of the... Why do you see your butt? Luke, <laughs> 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 no, that's the grey tank and um, under here we've got a grey hose coming off the tank and there's a, that's the drain from the kitchen and it goes into the grey yeah but there's another um, I don't know if you can see there another where that pipe's going across there that's another that's one of our water tanks that's an 80 litre uh, tank that was originally on the caravan when we bought it and we had two 80 litre tanks but we've now I'll show you in a minute we've now got we've got this tank but we've got another tank that's been custom built down the front um, and it's 220 litres, so we've got 300 litres of water in total. This is the water cupboard. Um, just get some keys out to unlock it. This is for this one here in the middle. Is for your plug your hose on with your with your hose connector. I'll get my hand out of the way so you can see. And then we've got this one here. Is they sort of pressurised these inlets, so they you sort of got to force water in through them with the tap pressure. If you can't just sort of tip a jug in or anything down it, it won't. The water won't go down. It'll it'll just come straight back out. So we've sort of got to be pumped into the um, inlet, which is a bit annoying actually for us. Would be be nice if we could just sort of get a container and tip some more water in. But it's sort of got to be. If it's not off a hose, it's got to be sort of pumped pumped in but that's the inlet for the tank down the back that I've just shown you the other nozzle there the inlet is for the tank underneath the front of the caravan this is underneath the front of the caravan now um, and this is the custom tank that we had made that I told you about so we've got 80 litres through the other side of the axles down there that you won't be able to just see this is up the front here is um, we had the other 80 litre tank taken off and they've in Jayco Canterbury and Christchurch have installed a, um, a big custom litre custom tank it's about 220 litres so it's um that's good actually it's um we're forever topping the water up and we just had 160 we had the two 80 litre tanks but now that we've got this tank um, we can probably if you're 
you know, really short showers, we can probably go for four, five or six days without having to um, fill the water up. So it's quite good. Um, and anyone that lives in a caravan will know that yeah, sort of the biggest problem is probably just about your water supply. This is a sort of a mixer, this tap here, and this mixes between your tanks. And I didn't know this, and, and we, when, we, when we had it, just, when we bought it, it was in the middle. And what that does is it sucks off both tanks at the same time with the water pump. With your with your running water, like your your bathroom and your you know your shower, your bathroom, your your kitchen, and um, and that was fine. But when we put the big tank on, the pump is lazy and it always goes for the easiest source of water. So it was emptying out the little tank up the back first, and um, it had a, emptying it at a quicker rate than the big tank, and it was. What was happening is it was sucking air from the back tank but it was nearly empty and it was sort of causing the pump to um to surge and every even when you at night when you're in bed and we were um if the pump was on which it's probably not supposed to be but we, we always leave it on but um it was sort of going every now cutting in every now and then and um just for a second or so and uh it was because that this it was sort of sucking from the the smaller tank it was empty and this still had the big tank still had water in it so what we do now is uh, we we can have it in the middle but we we generally just um, have it switched over to one tank so that's that we arrow there is, is it's pointed to the to the big tank I see the pipe goes in there so that's it's going from that tank and if you turn it to the other way uh, that's on the that's on the other tank so if we sort of choose between the tanks we empty one and then switch over to the other this here is our sort of our gas hot water heater or caliphant or whatever you want to call it um, and we've got two options we can run off the power when we're, if we're plugged in and um, of course you can run off it's it's um, run off LPG as well, so we can sort of switch when we're off grid. If we have got no somewhere where there's no power, we can run off the gas and heat the water, just the same as the fridge. Obviously, heats the heats uses gas to to function as well as well as electricity. This has just been serviced by Jayco, and they've sort of cleaned the, all this ash stuff out of the bottom of it. That's why it looks a bit messy there, but because um, we've lived in this for a year, so it probably. We've used it quite a bit, so it's obviously built up a bit of stuff, but um, um, yeah, I'm just having trouble focusing because it's the sun's out and um, and it's in the shade here, but this, if you can see this is just behind the gas equipment here, there's a wee on off switch. If, you get, if you're if you on power, you have to turn it to on so that it uses electricity to heat, and if you're off, if you're off using your gas, water heater which is the switch inside I'll show you later on but um that'll make it go off that'll use the gas if it's off and you use the switch the switch inside to heat it up so it, um, it's been good it works pretty well and hasn't we haven't had any issues with it another sort of accessory that we got um, with the caravan well, that it didn't have but we put put in it was a We've got a Webasto 2 kilowatt diesel heater because we're in the South Island of New Zealand. Uh, we have been for the last year anyway, and uh, in the winter time we need you need a pretty good source of heat. So uh, we got we got this heater installed, 2 kilowatt diesel heater, and this is the what it looks like underneath the caravan. That's the exhaust sort of system for it that comes from the through the floor where the heater is inside the caravan. And then you've sort of got your combustion chamber so this thing up there, I guess that is. And then you've got your your hose that runs. Um, there's a tank. I'll show you. Uh, it runs up. It's in the boot in the front, the tunnel boot, and it's um, that's where your diesel comes from to feed the heater. And this is just by the drawbar of the caravan. Okay, we're up near the front now. This is um, the front tunnel boot. I've got open um, and as you can see it goes you can see daylight at the end of the tunnel I've got
got all my sort of we've got hoses and power cords and drills and uh, rubbish bin tools etc and this is the the container for the diesel heater got the container pulled out of it now so you can see um, a bit of sunlight would probably help wouldn't it um, that's the the clip and it clips on to uh, the you can that we trigger you can undo that and uh, and it clips on to there and that's that's the I've just I found out if you don't have this little uh, nozzle on the cap here you've got to have this open because I did I had, I, when I took it I put this in the ute to take it to the garage to to fill up with diesel and I put the I closed that little little nozzle thing there and if you don't open it again once you plug it back into your diesel heater you start getting uh, fumes coming through into the caravan <laughs> so because it sort of sucks and it's not releasing any pressure so as it's pumping the diesel through so um, you have to make sure well I've found out I've had to make sure that this has got to be loose there's a little bit of a gap uh, there underneath it so that's the um, the connection pulled off the container there. Um, there's the where it comes onto the container. And you just push it in. So you just got to make sure that it's clipped on properly. That little clip sort of there's a notch there. I think I've got it on properly actually. But it's got to be clicked on properly, otherwise it's problems. These um these locks here that go in your on your um, lockers they need a bit of CRC or WD-40 or something from time to time because they get a bit dry and um, they're a bit hard to open and close so, and just sort of squirt in a, a bit through in here to keep it nice and freed up So we've just had this um, Jayco caravan, we've just had it sort of had its yearly service at the Jayco dealership and um, I've got to say I'm pretty impressed with what they did, they were very thorough, every little thing, um, it's you know, there's quite, the awning was getting a bit worn down, they've renewed uh, some, well, there's a bracket under, around the bottom there, they've renewed and they've greased everything up and um, made sure it sort of runs smoothly. All the windows have been um, sort of lubricated, and the you know the latches and everything. Um, one thing that broke was this uh, little handle here, and um, it's just a wee key light. And there's a button up here. You can turn it on and off just to see when you let's see we find your keys at the, in the dark, and this actually um, stopped working. So we had to get that replaced. Uh, but yeah there's things inside as well that they sort of just wear and because we live in it full time there's sort of wear and tear things that happen and um, they've you know they're very thorough to, to fix everything so this is a bunk model um, Jayco that we've got we've got uh, two bunks where those long windows are there the boys have well, two boys have got bunks in there and then that's under um, one of the beds and then this this cupboard here We've got all our chairs and uh, and table in there. It's just quite good when you pull up, you flick the awning out, and you can get all your chairs out just from out here. So, um, and this cupboard here is a little cupboard for the TV. Right, it's about two or three months later than I did the exterior part of the, this video. Um, it just we were quite been quite busy leading up to Christmas, so we didn't. I didn't get around to um, going through the interior really for a few for a few months. But um, it's a wet. We're in Mosgiel, Dunedin, New Zealand today, and it's a wet day. And we've tried tried to take the dogs for a walk. You can see they've got nice and wet on the seat there. But um, tried tried to take them for a walk, and it's a bit wet for that. So we we're stuck inside today, and the. Um, Everyone else is away, so it's a good uh, opportunity to do the interior part of this. Um, I thought I'd start with 
the front. This is our obviously our bed, and we've got our cupboards and shelves and stuff. And, uh, up in the ceiling, we've got a smoke alarm, carbon monoxide sensor, I think. And uh, this is for your TV. This to put the put your when you finally got your caravans level and turned your gas on and everything. You, you can, the last thing you really need to do is do your do your dish. You can see just through <coughs> through the through the roof hatch there. This here is um is the gas detector and it's um it's great being under the bed because if you if you have a be a few beers and a curry or something the night before and you blow off in bed that it will set the farts will set that off so <laughs> you don't want to own up to it. <laughs> but um. This is the diesel heater, along with all our gear that we've got on the under the bed here. This is the diesel heater that I, sho that I showed you that from outside what it looks like underneath the caravan. Um, and the intake. Oh, okay. Look out, Riley! You're in the way. This here is it's a. This is the intake. It sucks air in there for the heater, so you want to keep your bed sheets and shoes and things away from that because it, it doesn't want to be blocked. It's might, I don't know if it, it might heat up or get too hot or something, but and then it um it blows. Yeah, this is the the vent that all the it blows hot air out to heat the heat the caravan. Um, so that's that. And uh, those are our batteries. We're two big um, 100 amp hour batteries, 100 each. So we've got about 200 amp hour of um, of power. Um, that the solar on the roof, solar pa two solar panels on the roof provide the the electricity for. Um, oh, and I'll show you the control for the diesel heaters just behind this curtain. Um, so that's the it's a the thing on the top's a heat sensor or a temperature sensor sensor I should I should imagine and um, this dial here is um, if you turn it so that's full power there where it's um it's on a thermostat so we turn it down at night so it's not going full full noise all the time otherwise it gets too hot but you can hear. It'll start to, um, it's just winding up now. find it's got an idea to crack a window or sometimes I, the roof uh, vent in the bathroom I open that just because it gets can get quite stuffy in here um, when you get the you've got the heater on for a while with the with the heat coming out so I'll just leave that for a minute because it's that it sort of ignites and then it takes a few minutes to shut off but um, this is our table that the dogs are at there the boys have got bunks down the back there. Um, it's the oven, and the kitchen, obviously. And TV up there. Uh, so this, I'll show you these buttons in here. Um, this is my our circuit breakers, obviously, and um, then we've got our. A tank tank gauge up there um, that's the and this button here with the green light is the water pump so if you turn that that turns it off and then you turn it on with, and then the green light means the pumps on and this monitor button is um, it's the battery is on the right hand side it's showing full but it's not that that um, accurate but our, we're a little bit low on water actually we've We've on our uh, we're on the custom tank on the big tank, and that's the one on the right, which is showing orange. So we've got about a third, roughly, in of water left in that. 
Um, so yeah. So hopefully that lasts us. It usually usually we've got pretty good at sort of timing the water to to keep us going, but um, it's always a thing in caravans if you you know, you've got to keep your run if you don't want to run out of water and uh, and oh this is I showed you the the gas uh, I showed you the gas caliphant thing on the outside and that switch. So we're on off-grid mode at the moment because we're not plugged into power. So this button, here, this switch here, this turns your um, ignites the gas to turn the turn the hot water on. Uh, this is our our solar um, sort of meter. It, um, it tells us what's going on with the solar. The batteries. It's actually a dull day today, so it's sort of. It's not usually higher on a, on a sunny day, but it's not doing too bad. It's getting 30.3 volts in. I'll just turn the light on again. And uh, 1.4 amps, which relates to the current, I suppose, that's going through the system into the battery. And the battery's at 13.4 volts, and it's getting 3.1 amps. So um, in the daytime, on a sunny day, we get up to about 14.3. On the, on the battery is the volts that it'll, it'll go to. Um, but uh, as people that live in motorhomes and caravans full time with solar, we have, we we uh, with the winter time or when it gets close to winter to we're close to the winter time, we have to go into a camp and go on power because we get down to about 12.3 volts is probably the lowest we go, and you don't really want to get much lower than that because it starts um, hurting the batteries. So the batteries that we've got, I think they're gel gel batteries and um, they don't like being discharged sort of below a certain level so we don't um, we try not to drop them down too far um, at the moment the fridge is running on gas so if you push this button that's um yeah it shows you on gas there where that's what that little flame icon means it's running off the LPG and you can switch between uh, I'm not the best at doing this the my wife usually knows does the fridge because she knows better, but um, no, that's not what I own. Oh, I won't fiddle with it. There's, you can see the one the icons that are dark. There's an automatic. It automatically switches between electricity and gas, or that little battery symbol. I mean, I think that's when you have it plugged into your vehicle. But um, I'm not 100% sure on how to switch between each different mode, but. Um, we can do it if it's a three three way fridge it's they're called don't they so you can do it if you need if we needed to um got the all important beer for what you need in every caravan i think <laughs> especially when you arrive somewhere and it's a hot day you need to need a nice cold beer after you've set up the caravan but um that's the main battery switch it turns all the cuts the power off from the batteries i believe and it's on the light means it's on battery at the moment and then um, when you plug into power um, if you get it to focus that is the, what, what, the, we, the light to the right left hand side of the battery light is mains and that turns green when you've plugged into power these skylights are quite good just... so that's with it open and there's also Obviously the screen, so you can have that across to keep the mozzies out. Um, or you can... At night obviously we push pull that across so it keeps the keeps the light out in the early in the morning so you're not waking up too early if you don't want to. And that, so this is, this bit of a passage in here is the... Is, where the two two boys our two boys sleep um they're not very <laughs> kids beds not very tidy but um and uh this is their cupboards for for clothes and stuff um and toys down the bottom probably the only thing that sort of wears out or we've had wear out inside that we haven't been able to fix is uh this this, this door the um up along these seams here it's sort of coming apart a wee bit 
the track has been sort of um, all lubricated up so it slides back and forth nicely but it's just one of those things that wears I guess the, the tops of this these joins are starting to pull open a wee bit so this is the bathroom uh, uh, I just wanted to mention that um, in the winter time when it gets cold we have uh, problems with a lot of condensation uh, building up along the seam in the back of this cupboard that's why we keep this cupboard open and uh, along there so next winter we're going to have to buy a, um, a dehumidifier because it's just it's it's a anyone that lives in a caravan will know it's a bit of a especially colder locations in the winter time it's um it's one of the things you've got to contend with is is condensation and moisture in a caravan yeah the last thing before i finish i'll just show you the lights this is this panel up the top here is the outside lights um and this one here is your is your lights inside so we've got one that turns that one on above the table and the other button turns these other lights on um, and it's quite good there's um there's a master switch to turn everything off there, but um, I don't know. There's, a, there's switches by the bed that um, has an off button on it, and you can turn all the lights in the caravan with that button as well. So it's um, it's quite good if you've left your lights on and you've got into bed. You don't have to get out of bed again. You can just push the button beside the bed, so that turns all the switches off. But um, as well these lights have got a, a sort of a blue function there. so that's i think i don't know I, someone in the comments might be able to correct me if, if, if i'm wrong but i think that's related to i think you can see this is full of bugs but i think these are related to uh to attracting uh bugs like sand flies and and that and moths because um, at night if you if you don't get your windows if it's a hot night and you have your windows open with a bit of with the gauze down um, and there's some and some sand flies and stuff come inside if this blue lights on it, they sort of get attracted to the blue light and it they all just but this you can see why there's lots of dead bugs in there we have to give it a clean but um, they all get attracted to these lights and they seem to go nuts and um, buzz around it and sort of uh, there's sort of 50 of them in, in the light there so but they don't seem to um, they don't seem to come in as much as they do if you've got the lights set on the normal mode um, so it's yeah it's sort of bright enough that you you can see what you're doing if you're not doing anything like writing uh, you know writing on a bit of paper or something but if you're just getting dressed or something you can cope with these just having blue lights on and it um it means that the bugs don't attack you the same i guess but um i don't know if that's what it's for or not but it's um that's quite a quite a neat, neat thing or it might be just to have a if you want to have a party in your caravan you can have some nice funky blue light <sighs> another important accessory for a caravan is uh along with the supply of beer is a bell um, like this ring for a beer <laughs> you get the idea fortunately it's not going to do me any good at the moment because I'm the only one here so it's um it's going to be not very good ringing the bell but it's um it usually works well until the novelty wears off and then you have to get your own anyway but um if you if you like this video and there's some things you want to ask me about um anything that i've covered you can leave a uh, comment in the in the comments if you want to or um i've covered some other things on, on, on about the caravan we've done a video on the on a barbecue um sort of platform that attaches to the side of the caravan or i've done a one on the awning outside as well um you can check those out i'll see if i can link them in the in this video uh but otherwise thanks for watching and
please like and subscribe if you want to if you want if you like this uh, video and uh, we'll see you next time thanks